All right, everyone, we are up. How's it going? It's good to see everyone. So, uh, hey, Chipty, we got uh, we got a ton of people in here. Ashley's watching. Um, we've got uh, we got people popping in on Instagram. How's it going? Got our coffee. Uh, so we're gonna be getting the stream started today. We're gonna be talking about photography and um, some different uh, techniques with in terms of lighting. We're gonna be talking about framing as well, which I should adjust on Instagram a little bit. Uh, we're going to be talking about framing, and we're also going to be talking about um, your settings, your camera settings, and um, different ways to um, edit your your images after the, after the fact. So let's get some coffee in me because I obviously need some. Um, hmm, make my overhead light a little brighter. All right, so we're working in a new studio right now, uh, which means that we have some new lighting setups. I'm going to adjust my lighting a little bit. Today's gonna be a little bit of troubleshooting, but uh, it, it, ooh, let's, let's, nope, other direction. Let's try that. How's that looking? Let me know. Um, we, have, uh, we have a new studio that we're working in and I'm really happy to introduce you all to it. Uh, we just moved over the weekend. I know it's a crazy time to be moving, but we made it happen and uh, everyone's been safe, so managed to uh to get into a new studio and I'm, I'm excited to show you the place and and show you some uh some cool uh cool stuff around here so hopefully the uh, the lighting's better thank you ashley for uh for checking in on us um but let's see let's uh let's get to some of our talking points here as always i'm going to um i'm going to start with a little ad read here uh uxl has been kind enough to to sponsor these episodes. So it's, it's good to be able to get on here and chat with everyone and, and start these conversations about media production and all that stuff. Um, so as always, this video is sponsored by UXL Career and Learning Network. Are you interested in learning a new skill? UXL is, learn is a leading provider in online training. They host courses from top rated instructors across the globe. Find courses on just about any subject and join a community of over half a million passionate learners. Visit UXL.com and register today. A lot of you are actually already registered on UXL, and that's how you get these live streams. Um, it's part of your, uh, you know, part of the, the free uh, curriculum that you get in addition to the uh, courses that you're paying for. UXL, is, as as far as I've uh, experienced, has been really, really good at adding some additional like free benefits to your uh, to your um, your courses. Like you get this big community that you can talk to, tons of people that you can chat with. Um, it's good to see everyone. Um, <laughs> it's good to see everyone chatting in on Instagram. Um, if you want to chat in and have us actually like see the conversation, have everyone see it, uh, head on over to either Facebook, YouTube, uh, both of those for UXL, or head over to Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash FCMG underscore stay. I would love to see you there. Uh, and then we'd be able to see you in the chats. So yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got some uh, got some chats in already. Let's see. Uh, good afternoon, my beautiful friend. You're, you guys are the beautiful ones. It's always great to see you. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's let's start chatting. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the basics. Um, we've been doing a course on photography. This is episode two. If you haven't seen episode one, go back and check that. We had a good discussion about smartphone photography and um, using the gear that you have and using it to the best of your ability, uh, best of its ability too. So. Um, talked about great ways to practice, all that stuff. Go check that episode out if you haven't seen it before. But if you're here now, definitely stick with us. We're going to be chatting about the basics for photography. So in my book, that's lighting, framing, uh, controls, aka the con controls of your camera, like how to, how to change, you know, settings and all that stuff. And then editing. Uh, that's going to be like the four parts of the process, really, because like lighting, in my opinion, is really everything. And if you're, even if you're shooting landscapes or anything like that, you have to be able to understand the settings of your camera and the controls of that and framing in order to make the lighting that is available to you work towards your advantage. Um, so that's, that's been a, a, a nice, here, let me go. I'm going to adjust my windows here. Um, so we've got a, a bunch of talking points that I want to hit on that, um, on that, those different subjects. We've got them kind of broken down into those four sections and, uh, we're going to talk about the quote unquote rules of photography. Uh, we're going to talk about your experiences and, and get your, uh, your input as well. But then we're going to talk about how you can break those rules, which I think is like, that's where photography starts to get really creative. Um, like there are standard ways of doing certain types of photography. 
like uh, real estate photography, for instance, there's like a standard way of, all right, if you do it like this, then it's basically gonna be right. But if you learn how to break those rules, when, why, and how to break those rules, then all of a sudden you can step up on your competition and you've got this, uh, you know, this edge on everyone else. So we're always looking for that edge as photographers. That's really about, um, you know, being able to stand out and being able to, um, being able to, uh, you know, grab your audience like that. And if you, if you don't have that ability, it can, it can be a little rough. So yeah, we got a bunch of people watching right now and chatting in. It's a little after 12 o'clock right now. Uh, we uh, started our stream a little bit early to hopefully get some people in and, and give you a chance to to chat in and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get up the uh, the UXL questions because when you when you chat into UXL uh, or, or when you sign into your UXL account, actually, you're gonna get the ability to register for these courses and ask questions. Um, but I've been having some trouble getting it up today. The um, the this page um, and it's uh, I, I would love to be answering these questions if you asked a uh, pre-register if you asked a pre-register question excuse me uh, definitely ask that question in the chats I want to see that in uh, YouTube or on Twitch or on Facebook we have um, UXL is on YouTube it's also on tw on Facebook sorry or you can find me on Twitch which I would really love to um, I would really love to have you there. Uh, we recently actually just made it to affiliate on Twitch, which means that I'm gonna have the ability to do more of these streams for you and talk more about media stuff and have these discussions. Um, I don't wanna put myself out as like the end all authority on this stuff by any means. I just wanna have a conversation with everyone and open up the floor for your comments, your experience and uh, your expertise as well. Because a lot of these people who are watching are, um, you know, there's they, you got more skill than I do in this field. Um, I'm just, I've got experience in the field and I want to talk about it. I love talking about this stuff too. Who doesn't like talking about camera gear and you know, all that fun junk. Um, okay, cool. So let's get, uh, I'm just checking over our chats here. Do, 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 do. Uh, my friend Subo asked me if I finished the season of, of the Clone Wars. I haven't even started it yet. I've, I've been working my way through the last seasons of the old Clone Wars stuff, but Anyway, let's get on the camera stuff. That's that's for gaming. That's for uh, nighttime and weekends. Um, I missed this past weekend, but geez, um, was moving. So hopefully, hopefully you'll understand. Um, but yeah, we got the new studio here. Obviously, the walls are very blank right now, but they're that's going to change. And you probably hear if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, uh, you're probably hearing a little tiny bit of an echo in the room, and that's because there's there's no dampening on the walls. There's no sound dampening. So I have this basic kind of cove behind me, as you can see with my red and blue lights, um, this sort of cove is creating an echo. So if you can hear, there's a there's a little bit of an echo there. So obviously I'm gonna have to adjust that over the next couple of weeks, but yeah, that's gonna be uh, part of the uh, the adjustment here. So Liz, it's great to have you. Uh, it's, uh, it's really cool to have people chatting in multiple times now. It's, uh, it's, we're building a community here. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have great conversations. So um, let's see, Liz, if, you, um, if, if you are, uh, you're just popping in, then uh, we're about to start talking about the basics in photography. Um, I feel like the four basic sort of tenants, the, you know, the pillars of photography, if you will, are lighting, framing, camera controls, and editing. Those are, uh, those are big things. It was pretty hard to move all my equipment, but actually I, I've made everything mobile enough so that um, uh, I can actually get all this stuff inside of a tiny little Kia Forte. So uh, in, in just about one trip, I managed to get all of my camera equipment. It was completely packed to the ceiling, but that's ne neither here nor there. We got it here, we're all safe, we're all good to go. So, and uh, people on uh, on Instagram, if you're, if you're hearing me answer questions, then it's, uh, that's uh, people on Facebook, Twit, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and uh, and another Facebook page. So there's a bunch of people chatting in. We would love to see your comments on Instagram if you are uh, if you're watching there. So come on over, check us out at uh, twitch.tv forward slash fcmg. No underscore forward slash fcmg underscore stay. Wow, my brain just like all right, completely lost it. Apparently, I need some water. So let's get. Um, Actually, I only have one screen right now. Uh, Misha2020 just asked, um, 
uh, how do you keep track of so many different screens? I actually, uh, there's, there's Instagram here, there's the camera that I'm looking into for the actual webcam stream. And then there's just, I just have my, my um, I think it's like a 27 inch monitor above that. So I've kind of got it streamlined right now, but I used to have another screen over there, but hopefully soon there's gonna be two screens over here. I'm gonna have like a, a little editing station. So it should be fun, it should be, uh, should be interesting. It's gonna give me more of a challenge, it's gonna be great. Okay. Thank you to whoever just subscribed. I really appreciate that. Um, we have a, um, there we go. Nate Williams just shared our stream. Nate Williams is a good friend of mine. He's a beat producer and rapper from Northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, okay. So now we got a, we got a good amount of people in the stream. Let's start chatting about what we're actually here to chat about. We're talking about the basics in photography. So as I mentioned before, that's going to be lighting, framing, controls, and editing. Actually, the, uh, the last studio, Liz asked, uh, what was wrong with your last studio? It seemed pretty well equipped. It was really well equipped, actually, but it was my parents' basement. So uh, I finally got a place again. I had just moved back down from Canada like earlier in the year, getting back on my feet and helping my parents out with you know manual labor stuff. And uh, you know now we're here. We finally got my own place. And this studio is actually much bigger, uh, despite the fact that you're just seeing two blank walls behind me. I swear that will change, I promise. Um, but uh, we're gonna have this pretty well set up. We're gonna have a couple of cameras around here too so we can multi-stream and I can show you you know, a lighting setup over there. But we're, we're gonna do a little tutorial over here today. I think it's gonna be just fine. Okay, so we're talking about the basics in photography. Lighting, framing, that means you know, how you put your, your shot around your subject. Um, also camera controls, how to use your camera manually. That's a big, big thing when it comes to being able to control your lighting and mm, sort of your framing too, but um, it's more so about your actual settings and like how, how you're gonna make your subject look, the emotion that you're trying to feel, all that stuff. Uh, and then finally editing, those are our big four, I think. Uh, editing is really the, the final product, like how you're gonna finish that photo. Uh, a lot of people say that, I mean, I've, I've heard photographers talk about like, oh, you know, I never edit my photos. I, I just, you know, put them right out of the camera. And like, that's, that's great if you, can, if you can get your photos just perfect out of camera. But at the same time, that might not be feasible in a lot of situations. It might not be practical. And honestly, there could be just a better way to get that image without having to make sure everything's perfect in your camera. Um, for instance, we'll talk about camera raw, which is really good. Uh, that's, that's a little like prosumer kind of level, I guess. Um, all right. So let's, let's get into lighting first of all. So right now what you're looking at is I have single light coming right down in front of me. Obviously I've got a little bit of backlight here. There is, um, I have some lights to the side that are very, very soft. Uh, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to mess with those. I'm actually going to set up some other lights right here. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about lighting and stuff like that. We're gonna do a basic three point setting setup, which is um, a, a typical kind of interview lighting setup. Um, also, we're gonna talk about some some ways that you can make that setup a little bit more efficient. Like I have a I have a way of setting up interviews that I love to use two lights. Um, I'm gonna show you the exact lights that I actually use. They're the GVM 520s Master Series. That's what they call them now. Back then, it was just the GVM 520s. Um, but uh, these, are, these are high CRI lights. CRI means color rendering index or color something. In, anyway, it's basically how well the lights will recreate skin tone in your camera. So if a light you know, projects a little bit too much green or a little bit too much magenta, it's going to lower that CRI rating. So it'll be around like a 95 or, or maybe lower. 95 is pretty good. Uh, you can typically do something just in camera to kind of balance that. Or even if you're taking photos, if you're using camera raw, you take that photo, you can adjust your white balance a little bit afterwards. That's where that comes in really, really handy. So that's one of the situations where you could use a lower CRI light and still kind of get away with it. But these lights that I'm using from GVM are 97 plus, um, which means that they have really, really high um, rendering index. And I know the difference between 95 and 97 is like, come on, it's only like two percentage points out of that entire scale, but it really does make a big difference. Um, I've been really loving the, the way that these lights look. They'll probably look a little bit better than this one. And honestly, they, 
they might look a bit off because I've balanced my light and my camera to this light. So we'll see how that kind of affects things. Um, and we'll be able to show you the daylight or indoor balance settings as well. Um, Ashley mentioned just in, just now in Restream that you can find these lights and more of our favorite gear on the official FCMG Stay gear list. Um, I like to share this link around. It's a little bit long in the, in the chat, but if you copy that link and you go check it out, you'll be able to see some of the lights that we're talking about, and you'll be able to see my entire list of like active gear too. Uh, on Instagram, if you want to see that link, come check out the videos on Facebook or on YouTube. We're chatting uh, through the UXL uh, platform. And then also on Twitch, you can come check us out, twitch.tv forward slash FCMG underscore stay. There's also, uh, let's see, Full Coverage Media Group on Facebook. That's uh, that's my company. We're streaming there as well. It's good to see everyone. Um, all right, so let's get this, let's get this lit, these lights set up. I've got a couple batteries, but I also have some plug-in power for them. So we might, uh, we might end up using both. I do like to show off uh, when lights have good battery options and I've been loving NPF batteries for lights recently. So I'll be back in just a second. I'm going to um, grab these lights that are right down here. I'm just gonna start setting things up, but I'll, you know what? I'll give you some tunes to kind of kind of relax to, you know? Um, I like to get stock music off of artlist.io. This is not a paid sponsorship by any means. Neither am I paid by GVM or anything like that. I've done some reviews for them, but it's, you know, I'm not being like paid to say this on stream. I just like these services. These are services that I use professionally. I'm a freelance media producer and they've been good to me. So uh, here's uh, something from Artlist. Let's see, let's find one of the ones. Yeah, okay, I think I think this is... Uh, let's try this one. Sure, a little guitar music as I set up these lights, cool. So I'll be back, I'll uh, keep an eye on the uh, the chats. Feel free to ask any questions while we're doing this. But I'm gonna get a uh, basic lighting setup so we can, we can check out some lighting setups. I just said the same thing twice. You, you, you get what I'm saying. All right. Something good to talk about too is um, light stands. So these are, uh, oh, sorry, that was really loud. These are some of the uh, the bigger ones. I think they're nine feet by um, by Neewer. You can find them on that gear list, and uh, I really like them because they've got these little these features where if you open this up, there's a little spring in the bottom. So if your light for some reason just falls out of nowhere, cracks down, it'll still be relatively okay. I'm not going to say that it's going to be fine because it depends on how heavy your light is, but um, it could save it. Could mean that little difference between a, a cracked plastic lens and your light being sort of okay you know so I like to put my my key lights on these bigger stands these can kind of sit right in front of your right in front of your subject um, but they're also really sturdy so you're not gonna run into you know one of these things tipping over as easily um, you'll have to put a heavier light on here to really make it destabilize like that so I'm gonna push Instagram a little bit back there how's it going service service oh service dog party nice nice to meet you we're chatting lighting today. Okay, so let's get, uh, I'll get some lights set up and then we'll chat.
Thanks for the uh, the chat in there, UXL. UXL just said on uh, on Facebook they're helping moderate this channel as well. I'm just setting up some lights. We're going to be talking about um, three point lighting setups and interview lighting setups in a minute. So uh, thank you everyone for watching on Instagram. I really appreciate it. Uh, we would love to hear you in the chats. The uh, the device that we're chatting onto Instagram though is a little bit too small. So um, it's uh, it's um, uh, and we would love to have you on the YouTube or Facebook streams. Both are under UXL. Come check it out and chat in. We'll, we'll find you up there on our restream chats and we'll be able to, uh, to do that. Um, Ashley, uh, we are going to do that soon. Ashley just sent a message down. She says, do you need me to come down and model for you? Uh, we are going to need that at some point. Not today though. Um, I'm going to be doing a lighting intensive and we're going to be talking about different emotions of different lighting, but we'll just talk about a basic lighting setup and how to control your lighting and how to kind of like mess with that in general. Uh, Nate mentions in the chat, he says, I remember those lights. Yeah, you do. Uh, we've done a couple shoots with these. I bring these everywhere because they come in little, little go packs like you saw me just pulling out and um, they have a cable built in with them so you can put in DC input power and uh, it's really easy to set up. So we're gonna get these finally set up. I've got uh, one more light to go and then we'll be good. Um, actually, you know what? I can show you one of my favorite little hair lights in a second. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Alrighty, so um, all the stands that I'm using today are, are by a company called Neewer. Uh, and Neewer makes some equipment that I would say is, is sometimes on the, the cheap side, people would say, like they're really inexpensive a lot of times, but if you find the right pieces of equipment, you can get some really, really good stuff. Um, so this is the, uh, the much smaller light stand. These are only, I think, six feet or five feet. Um, I've been loving their products. It's been uh, it's been working really good. Their light stands in particular, I think are fantastic. They all come with that quarter 20 thread on top. Um, these other ones have, uh, they have screw locks like this here. This one has just little flip locks. So this is great for lighter, <laughs> lighter lights. Wow. Uh, lights that weigh less. Uh, yeah, but uh, newer, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, Liz, newer tripod, they can be, they can have some honestly great stuff. Uh, I, I call them like diamonds in the rough. Like you gotta kind of search for stuff with newer, but you can get some really, really great products. Uh, let's see, we got some, uh, are those lights expensive? Misha2020 asks. Uh, let's let's check it out right now. I've uh, got the, uh, the link in the chat here. I'm gonna go to the FCMG gear store. We're gonna scroll down. I think I have these towards the bottom. Yeah, okay, so. Actually, this is a pretty dang good deal. Okay, so you can get three of these lights right now for total $500. They also come with three light stands, three power supplies. You get one, two, three, four, five, six diffusers. Wow, okay, uh, that's, man. Okay, you get extra diffusers, diffusion panels. So, you, uh, wait, no. Okay, all right, I see what's going on here. There's three slide-in diffusers, which I'll show you. Bring this guy over here. Okay, so this light, they have uh, barn doors. So it looks like each light gets a set of barn doors um, in this in this three pack that I'm talking about. Let's do this. Yep, there we go. Okay, each has a set of barn doors. Sorry, that's probably right in your ear. But they also have these um, these slide out screens so you can you can slide diffusion in and out of these lights which I think is really really key um, if you want hard point lighting you can use them just like this if you want something a little bit more diffused you simply slide that in you're good but there's another diffuser that you can put on top of this it has little uh, little kind of mounts that come out of here and then it's another panel directly on top so you can really really diffuse these lights I don't think that they're powerful enough to use the double diffusion Sometimes it's nice to have it just sort of sitting off as a little bit of a bounce, 
But um, I really like this setup where it's got the barn door so you can focus your light, you can choose where things are going. Uh, but then um, it also has that diffusion panel inside of it. You can't have the barn doors and the exterior mounted um, diffusion panel on at the same time. So it's kind of a bit of a choice there. But these things are fantastic. They, uh, they really have been doing me well. Um, they have uh, NPF battery slots in the back. I can show you right up here. Let's see if we can get Instagram to see this as well. Okay, so they have uh, NPF battery slots up here. You can put two NPF batteries in there. I think it only works if you have both batteries in there. I haven't honestly tested it recently. We could today, but I have a feeling that uh, you need both batteries in there. Either way, uh, you can also plug it directly into the wall and each one of these comes with, uh, it actually comes with the power supply too. So you get light stand, the light itself, you get a, a slide in diffuser, you get barn doors, you get an exterior diffuser, you also get a power supply, uh, and you also get a giant case that carries all three of them. So for $500, that's extremely inexpensive. Um, they also have a four light kit for $549, so you're getting an extra light and uh, a remote to control all these. Oh, did I mention? These all have uh, radio connections so that you, you can set one light as the master light and you can group others into different groups and uh, control each group individually with that one master light. This uh, four light kit apparently comes with a, uh, it comes with a remote too, which is awesome. So I'll let you in on another secret too. When I bought this individual light, it was $295. This was almost two years ago. This is the same, same one that is in that kit. So you get four of these for $550 uh, or three of them for $500. Um, they've gone way down in price since I first bought them. And honestly, I don't regret them at all. They've made their money back and then some. Their cost back, I should say. They've made their cost back and then some. They really are fantastic. So definitely check out that GVM Master Series. It's in the, uh, the gear list there and... Um, yeah, they've been really helping out. I'm gonna look through these these comments really quick. Uh, tripod isn't bad. I'm happy with the price. I paid less than 50 US. That's a great price for a good solid tripod. Um, hey, if it works for you, stick with it. That's what I. <laughs> that's what I say. Is a slider diffuser better than softbox? Softbox would be better. The slider diffuser does a good job of just breaking up the the bead kind of look because if you uh, if you take this this diffuser panel out then you're actually gonna get, um, you're gonna get multiple shadows kind of stacked in a row. Uh, let's see if I can actually show that to you. I think I might be able to. <clears throat> let's flip this thing around. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shine this directly onto the wall behind us. And then I'm gonna use my hand as a model and you're gonna see the shadow from that. All right, so let's turn this guy on. Uh, flip to the right. There we go. Nice and bright. Wow. That's real bright. All right. So you can balance the color. Instagram is going crazy right now because my phone is auto white balancing. Uh, meanwhile, I'm flipping between signals here. So let's, let's def turn this down just a little bit. It's not going crazy. Uh, let's see here. That looks good. Okay. Okay. So pointing off in this direction. We're gonna brighten it up. It's gonna be a little intense for a minute. But we're gonna take this diffuser panel out and you're not gonna to see too much of a change in the quality of light. Yeah, it's gonna be more focused, but I think the main thing, I wanna be able to show these, these shadows. Uh, yeah, okay, so, mm, nope, too bright. All right, you gotta balance some lights out here. Gotta figure out how I can show you guys this. Uh, maybe like, like that. Uh, all right, so here's something that's really interesting. The, what, the further away a light source is, the sharper your shadows will look. That sounds very, that sounds very weird, but there's actually physics behind that. So a light source is emitting light in all directions, right? Um, so the further away you get from that object, the straighter directionally, the light is going to be. So the less it's going to, you know, it's going to splay off to the sides and show that sort of this look where it's very, very soft shadow. 
Um, so let's go, uh, I'm gonna stand up really quick and I'm gonna show you this. So here you can see there's, um, there's a bit of like layering to my shadows. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but there's, basically what's happening is, oh geez. Basically what's happening is there's, um, there's rows of beads and because those beads are in straight lines, you'll get shadows that go progressively darker as they get closer to the subject. Uh, Instagram, what we're doing right now is we're doing a lighting tutorial. We're talking about different lighting situations and uh, we would love to see you in the chats on either Facebook or YouTube. We're on uh, UXL's Facebook and YouTube and we're also on Twitch. So twitch.tv forward slash FCMG underscore stay. Would love to see you there. But yeah, come check us out and we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking some more lighting. So basically you can get these these weird shadows with these um, these panels. So you have to diffuse them. I use these for that. Um, just sliding them directly in like so. And then your shadows, I'm gonna pop this on again. Then your shadows are gonna be much more diffuse. So I'll, I'll go back to the wall, you'll kind of see what I mean. So, I know it's not a huge difference, but if you're, say, you're lighting a documentary or something like that, you're gonna need to be aware of these things because that can, that can change the whole look of your story. As we're gonna talk later on, um, there is a, like, a lot of emotion tied to certain types of lighting. So, we're going to uh, we're gonna start setting up that, uh, yeah, okay. Ashley's saying, it looks like two layers, it was visible. So yeah, it's, it's kind of showing those, those lines if you don't have that diffuser on. So it's always good to have a little, little bit of diffusion on. Uh, softbox, to answer your question, would give you better diffusion. But the more you diffuse your light, the less powerful it's gonna be. So you have to balance out power and diffusion. You can get a way, way powerful light, like a, uh, let's see, GVM makes like 80 watt chip on board lights. Um, I think uh, Godox, I have two of the Godox 60S, which is like um, a 60 watt single chip light. So you get really, really sharp shadows, first of all, because it's a single light, but um, you also get a whole heck of a lot of power. So you can put more diffusion on there and make it softer, more pleasant light because of that, because you have that power to play with. Uh, let's look back in our chats. I'm gonna get a sip of water while we chat too. Uh, do, 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 do. Is the slider diffuser better than the softbox? It's not, I wouldn't say it's better than the softbox. I think it just removes some of that uh, aberration, basically. Barn doors are removable. Yes, they are. Daryl Henry asked that question on, uh, on YouTube. Come join us there if you're watching on Instagram. Um, it looks like two layers, it was visible. Yeah, um, it's, it's definitely something that can be like distracting during a video. If you're lighting a subject and you see these weird like jagged shadows in the background, it almost looks like someone has anti-aliasing turned off, you know? Um, Anyway, <laughs> okay, let's get into the basics here. We're gonna do a, a basic three point setup. So when I, when I talk about my, when I think about a subject, so we're gonna be looking into the, the webcam for this one. Uh, all right, so here's, here's straight on. I typically wanna have my key light for the person, which is the main light that's gonna be lighting up their face, a little bit off center. Um, do we know who's making soft boxes for these lights? I know Neewer has some like LED panel soft boxes that you can get. They're little pop out boxes. Um, not sure how sturdy they are, but in my experience, I've had, I've had good times with them. So, um, I, I know that they're, they've got some good stuff. I would, I would buy like one first instead of getting like, you know, ones for all of your lights. Just make sure that they're good quality first and then purchase as necessary. Um, so the way I like to do it is you have one key light a little bit off to the side. Uh, if I'm trying to make it more dramatic, like say um, I wanna show a little bit more shadow on this side, I'll have my key light off on the side that is, uh, is, is not the side that we're seeing the most of. So if the person is looking this way off camera, you can light this side and get a whole lot of drama. Let's take a look at that. This is just a single light at this point. So, 
You're gonna get a lot more drama in this way, and I can also turn off this light, which would basically be a fill. There we go. All right, so lighting like this is gonna be very dramatic. You're gonna have a one hard edge on Instagram. It's trying to compensate and sort of, uh, sort of balance for that, but that's gonna be impossible because my giant bald head is super shiny. Um, so uh, this is gonna be way more dramatic. Meanwhile, if you're looking to do something a little bit more, um, a little bit more either uh, like documentary style or natural, then you'd want to light from the other side. Exactly. Daryl Henry says maybe bounce from the other side. That's another option too. Cool thing is you can use things that are uh, that are just white, like this little whiteboard. And let's see if this works. Uh, um, probably not powerful enough. Uh, I have this turned all the way down right now, but you can you can see when I here. All right, I'm gonna blow out the camera for a second, and we're just gonna look at this. If you if you take this card, just look how much lighting is added by moving something like that close to it. So that's that's what Daryl's talking about when he says bounce. Uh, let's turn that back down. Okay, now we're going to. Um, I was just showing everyone my list of my to do list there, I guess. Uh, all right, so now this is. This is going to go become a different light for us. Let me turn this back on. Ah, all right. So, if we want that nice, like, documentary look, we're going to put our light on this side. So, I'm going to move a light just over here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit off camera, but I promise you that it's there. Okay, so let's get this one set up. Move it a little more so it's it's in front. So I'll turn back this way. How I was showing you before, I'm gonna turn this uh, down and I'm trying to adjust all my settings before I even turn the light on. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna turn this on. All right, and now on this side, obviously it's super bright. And we want it balanced to daylight. Okay, so turn this guy off again. Yeah. All right. It's still not quite where I want the light to be. A little too dramatic still. Okay, let's move this over. I know it's it's right in my face. So you're seeing um you're seeing very very bright lights on Instagram. All right, there. That's that's a little bit better. Instagram's kind of balanced out a bit. I'm gonna pop on my um my autofocus here. Eh. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is much more pleasant. It's still very dramatic because you're getting shadows on this side. Um, thank you, Ashley. You just dropped off some water to my left. I uh, I noticed you doing that. I was just deep in you know lighting city here. So this is this is much more pleasant lighting. Um, <laughs> Liz, I actually do. Ashley's uh, Ashley's been fantastic at being an assistant lately. Um, she's been kicking butt at it. She's she's working nine to five though from home. So. She's got uh, she's got stuff that she's got to do. Um, so here here you can see this front three quarter lighting, uh, which makes it much more pleasant. Um, like say if I'm if I'm talking in this direction, then it's just going to leave the shadows on my on my far side. So let's um, let's add this other light as a fill here, and you can see all of a sudden it's much nicer. All right, so it's you're seeing the light here. This is still not quite as far as I would like it. I would like to have more light on the, th the front three quarters of my face. Something more like that. Yeah. Where, um, all right, so you can see this eye is now catching this light a little bit. Um, having that secondary catch light is huge. Being able to see two catch lights in your subject's eyes is something that can make them very, very, yeah, it is, it is a little tough with my console right in front of me. I'm gonna do another setup soon. We're gonna do a lighting intensive and actually have it in like the middle of the room. So we'll be able to do some more, more cool stuff. I'll also have a subject set up for us. I literally just moved in this weekend, so we're still uh, figuring the studio out a little bit. But as you can see, now I suddenly have two catch lights in my eyes, which are these little tiny reflections things 
um, that does a huge, huge job when it comes to humanizing your subject, like making people look human and look alive. Uh, if you notice, you watch movies, even in dark scenes, they'll still somehow have like these little catch lights in their eyes a lot of the time. And that's um, in film, I think that's called, uh, oh shoot, there's a name for that light. It's a tiny, I think it's a, no, it's not a gobo. Anyway, it's this tiny little light, basically, that they shine just off of the, the actor's face, so you get that reflection in their eyes, and it makes them look alive. So injecting that into your photos as much as possible can do a lot to, to, uh, to humanize your subjects. So here you can see my key light is now on the, on the far side, and my fill is back here. Um, this is sort of a, a setup that I like to do, where I'll, uh, I'll have someone sort of set up like this. So here your key light is on the the far side of the person's face but it's still lighting up three quarters of the face so you can see here this is where that shadow stripe sort of comes through and that side light gets blocked so you can see i'm lighting up the front of my face like i'm almost directly looking into the light um and then i'm just sort of filling on the back end this would be a uh this light here to my back like if i if i shadow that one this light I would call a hair light because then you're, you're getting the line around the, the back of the head, helps, helps the shoulder stand out, all that stuff. See, otherwise you, I would just, this would blend into my chair. You can kind of see a little bit when I, when I do that. So there, my shoulder sort of disappears, my neckline sort of disappears, that all gets very, very dark back here. Meanwhile, this light literally just makes me, boop, just stand off just a little bit. Um, not to be standoffish, but, <laughs> uh, all right. So this is, uh, this is my two point interview lighting. There are like standards to doing this though. So there is a three point interview lighting setup. I think this is like, it, it gets a lot of nice drama. Oh, my autofocus just went bonkers. Bring it back to my face. No, no. Okay. Doesn't want to do that. <laughs> Trying to wake up my autofocus here. All right, we're going back to manual. Uh, and let's set it back. Nope, too far. Real hard to see when you're doing this alone. All right, that's good enough. All right, cool. So here, um, this is this is much more of a dramatic interview setup. Like it's gonna be, uh, you're, you're not gonna have this on like, uh, uh, I, I maybe maybe you would have it on like Nat Geo or something like that, but this is like a like a Vice documentary. You know, you want some like vibrant colors in the background and things like that. Um, if you notice, I have these color bars in the background that uh, adds a little bit of color contrast, so it's going to help me stand off from the background a little bit. My skin is more orange, so it's going to show up better on a blue background as opposed to just a white wall or if I had like orange or white or something like that, it's gonna give me better contrast. So here we go, adjust this a little bit, I'm trying to sort of perfect this lighting setup. That's, that's about what I would do for an interview, right there. Cool. <sighs> Thank you, Ashley, for the extra water, I appreciate that. Um, here you get much more drama, you get that far side, real lit up you get that near side you get the uh the fill light of the actual side of the face you see that yeah that makes a big difference but then you also get this this sort of hair light here um typically what i see is you see more of a uh, left and right configuration so i'll see something where these lights are a little bit more forward so you get an interview that looks more like this and that's great. You have uh, you know good full lighting on the face. It's much more uh, much more um, I would say muted. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit more. Try and focus it in the right spot. Okay, there we go. All right. So here it's much more uh, it's much more even. Um, I think it's a it's a great way to set up your lights and and do do like um, documentary style or TV broadcast interviews. This is like a, a good standard to hold on to. <laughs> Misha, uh, Misha asks, how is your autofocus so quiet? My autofocus is so quiet because my microphone is here. It's not on my camera. That's a big thing. If you have autofocus that goes, ee, 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 um, 
it's it's best to take your microphone and put it somewhere else like get it off the camera um the other reason is actually because that's a sigma lens and sigma lenses i've noticed on sony mirrorless cameras are just crazy quiet you can shoot video and use the internal audio and you'll be totally fine um okay so we're, we're looking at these uh these interview lighting setups so typically what people do see now my my shoulder again is starting to fall off just because my lighting is so even um it's just two panels exactly the same one's one is here one is over here they're at about um like a uh what would that be like a 45 degree angle from off from center so this setup i like when people have to like read things or they need to use their eyes because it's much easier than looking directly into a light like if you're looking like this um staring directly into your lights or having your subject stare directly down lights is is kind of hard sometimes especially if you're doing flash photography flash photography is like just rough sometimes if you're if you're just boom right in someone's face um you you can honestly like hurt hurt people's eyes that way so you have to be careful about how much power you're putting into your flash photography and also the direction that you're, you're coming from so doing an, doing a lighting setup like this where it's about a quarter you know 45 degree angle off from center on both sides can look really really nice it's also a lot easier of a setup because you just there's your person you go boom you set two lights about you know a couple feet apart uh, in front of them, depending on how uh, how far away you are, how powerful your lights are, etc. Uh, like I would like to have these a little bit further away so I can show you um, and show you a little bit more of their power and their spread and all that stuff. But um, this will have to do for now. So, how do you get your subject now to stand up off that back stand off of that background? Uh, you would add a hair light. So we're gonna grab another hair light. This is actually a different company for this one. I do have a third. GVM light. It's another big panel. It's actually their uh, 50 RS, which is their RGB panel. Those are super helpful. They can be great for throwing up light in the background, colored light in the background, so you get that color contrast. But also, um, uh, there's there's more simple solutions. So here's my simple solution to that. Uh, I like to grab these little guys, which is the YN216. So. I, if you heard me mention this is the uh, these big lights are the GVM 520s 520 is the number of beads that these LED lights have so there's 520 LEDs in that light right this little guy uh, just about a quarter of the size is um, 216 LED bulbs and it's gonna be directly flat into here uh, I like the pattern of them YN216, so this is 216. You can kind of see it, beep, kind of see it right there. Um, Liz, that's gonna be in the, in the gear list too. It should be down there somewhere. But these little guys are great spotlights. They're much more directional. Uh, that means that they're gonna throw light in a, in a path as opposed to just flooding everywhere. Uh, but we're gonna grab a battery for these. Where'd my batteries go? All right, here we go. We're back. Um, these little guys do take, um, they do take DC power. You can plug in an, uh, like a power inverter right there. It also, this is a really cool feature, which I don't know if I'm gonna, there we go. Um, it also takes AA batteries. So you can put AA batteries in this thing, six of them. Uh, you can use rechargeables, which I think would be the best option. But um, I think the best battery life is this battery that goes on top, which is an NPF. And these guys have super high capacity. They're very inexpensive and um, they're rechargeable. So I love these lights a whole lot, a whole lot. So as you can see, this little guy is powerful. It's very, very, very bright. Um, like you can, you can blow out the, like even beyond these big lights that I was, I was using. So let's like watch. I'm gonna turn this one all the way up. You'll see how bright that is. This thing still overpowers it a little bit. And that is because, eh, it's so bright. Okay, that's because these are focused like beads. They're, they're lensed, so that means that they, they actually focus in a direction. So when a, when a light is just spreading out everywhere, 
you're going to get uh, less power relatively. Whereas if a light focuses its beam, you're going to get more power in that beam. So you can actually get more light out of powerful lights like that. This thing, Daryl, this thing is super, super light. It's a plastic body. It's um, plastic barn doors, all this stuff. I've had these in a bag in the back of my car for the past two years. I have two of them. Uh, I've dropped all kinds of things on top of them. Um, honestly, I'm surprised that they still work, but they work great and they've worked flawlessly for me. So what I would do with this is I would grab my teeny tiny little newer stand because these are perfect for these. Uh, by the way, I think you can get two of these stands for like 30 bucks or something. So you get yourself two of these lights. Let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can find, uh, let's see if I can find these on the gear list. Uh, do, 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 do. There's a lot of stuff on here now. There they are. Okay. So they're, they're about three quarters of the way down. Uh, right next to the uh, the Yongnuo, these are these are both Yongnuo. So Yongnuo makes the YN216, which is this little spotlight that I'm talking about. But Yongnuo also makes these these light bars, which is the YN360. Um, I got the version one because that takes NPF batteries as well. So you can just carry around a bunch of NPF batteries and you're good for every light that you own. Um, the version two is a little bit more powerful, but it it's uh, rechargeable. So it's an internal lithium battery. Those can be great, but if you're traveling, you can't take big lithium batteries with you. So it's better to just like uh, NPF and then store those in your carry-on or store those in your, I think it's your carry-on. Anyway, I, I'm not an authority on that stuff. I'm better with lights. Let's talk about this stuff. All right. So this one is going to go up and behind. Here we go. I'm going to turn this guy way down because it's super powerful. Okay, and something like that should be all that we need, honestly. We don't need a lot of power uh, when, you're, when you're doing your hair lights. Let's see there. That's, that's still honestly too powerful. So these can go, this could go directly behind me. You can see there I'm getting a little bit more like my beard is getting illuminated here. My shoulder, uh, the top of my head is getting a little bit, I think I want it more on this side. Nope. Nope. Actually I want it. Eh. All right, there's so more over here. Put this sort of off and behind. Yeah, like that looks pretty good. All right, so this obviously is, it's lighting up the side of my head. You can see a whole lot, which is a little bit too much to be honest. So sitting here like this is gonna work a lot better. So you can use your third light. This is just as low as it goes. I would typically bring it back more. I'd pull that a little bit further away from the subject because it's just it's just sort of overpowering right now. Um, also, then you can get the same angle of light, but pulling it further back at that angle, eventually it's gonna disappear from the frame. So then you can turn it up more and compensate like that. These are all constant lights though. So these aren't really like photography strobes or anything like that, but what you can do is you can set up your lights in the same positions. So you would have just about the same lighting setup, but you would just be using flashes instead. Um, this is kind of an aggressive setup for, uh, for like a photo shoot, just having, having two key, like a, a key and a fill and then having a hair light. Um, that's more typical of like uh, interview setups and things like that. But um, overall, it's still going to be a, a really solid setup if you're doing headshot photography, or you're trying to do uh, like passport photos or something like that, like something where it's just documenting. You're just trying to get a good call, good, solid, clean image. James Bass, no worries that you're late. We're, uh, we're good. Uh, we're talking about uh, photo setups and um, different types of lighting. And we're going to be talking about framing in a little bit, how to frame your subjects and just different ways to do this sort of stuff. 
we're having a discussion. So it's, it's always, um, it's always great to have people chat in. You're always welcome to ask me anything about photo, video, or media along the way. But, uh, today's subject is the basics in photography. We're getting into, uh, you know, lighting, we're getting into, uh, framing the camera controls and then editing. So currently still on lighting, but as you can see, we got all kinds of stuff going on right now. There's uh, there's a couple lights behind me. Um, and then, uh, yes, it does start at 12. Um, I've been uh, rolling in the lighting part for a while. This is, I, in my opinion, lighting is one of the biggest things with photography. Uh, learning how to control your light, how to block out light and be able to, um, to set up lights of your own is real key. Um, all right, I got more water over there. I think it's time for some coffee though. All right. So we discussed, um, we discussed a two point setup before too, which is basically instead of having these two key lights like this, you're switching it so that you have one sort of off to the side and one more directly in front. You're going to get a more dramatic lighting setup that way, but you're, um, you know, depending on your medium that can be, that can work really well. I, I really like that, that dual lighting setup and we can honestly just switch off one of these lights and get right back to it. You'll see what I mean when I talk about, um, you know, being able to just cut out one of your lights and not have to bring as much equipment with you. So if I kill this one, this is going to be a very dramatic example. So the subject would be sort of sitting here. I would actually just move this a little bit further out. Still too powerful though. Um, and now here you have a dramatic lighting setup. Great for photography too, in my opinion, um, having a, a key light that's off center. Uh, you pull it off about to a 45 degree angle and then, um, having a hair light a little bit behind that's also acting as a fill. Uh, you get a little bit on the side here. I could even bring that back a little bit. So you get some on the side, you get some on the side of your face and all that stuff, but you, it also brings, um, it helps them stand off from the background. So it, sh it lights my shoulder. It just gives me more of a three dimensional look. And that's really something that you're trying to go for when you are lighting your subjects. You're trying to show depth, you're trying to show character, and you're trying to show some emotion with that lighting. So we're going to mess around with uh, position of lights now. That's, I think, the next big thing when it comes to uh, determining the emotion in your photos. So I'm going to take this guy off of the, or actually, no, I'm going to leave that on the stand. But you'll see what happens. Right now, it's, it's fairly even. It's just a little bit above eye line with me right now. Uh, Liz, we were talking about three point lighting. That's just sort of, that's more of like documentary stuff. I like to use a little bit more drama just personally, but, um, so now we're talking about a two point setup. This is a, uh, do you have a decent mini boom arm? This is actually a, uh, like, um, this boom arm is a newer, um, boom arm. I think it's on that list as well. The gear list. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. If you're talking for a, for a backlight. So yes, something that I would do is use a light stand that has another crossbar atop it, atop, so that you can boom your light over without having it show up in the background. Um, we'll be kind of going into more equipment like that, like C stands and bigger, heavier duty equipment uh, on later episodes. That's going to come into our videography courses. That's going to come into some of our um, our other content that we're talking about. So. We'll definitely get back to that, Daryl. I, I really appreciate that comment. It's good that you're good that we're uh, we've got lighting people in here. So Instagram, we have about 15 seconds remaining. I would love to see you guys on the uh, the UXL YouTube and Facebook channels. Uh, also, come out to twitch.tv forward slash fcmg underscore stay if you want to re resume the chat. Thanks for watching, Instagram. You guys are still on the hook though. So Instagram just ended. They have a 60 minute time limit there, but now we get to chat. We get to have our own, you know, little, little chat over here. AKA I'm just going to sip some coffee. Okay. All right. So we're, we're going to continue talking about this lighting setup, but we're going to talk about emotion when it comes to actually where you position your thing now. So your thing, your light, um, you can see as I drop it down, we go below eye line. Insta limits to um, to 60 minutes on uh, I think verified accounts and whatnot. Otherwise, it's it's much shorter than that actually. Um, but that's just on live content. They just have that that sort of limit. So you can see, as soon as you lower this down, you're going to get more of the face. It's going to be even with the face, but it's going to be much more um, 
like a sort of like a, a more somber emotion like there's people colluding about something or whatnot you can even angle this down a little bit more and it'll dim it just a touch but um yeah makes makes for really dramatic lighting this would be good for like a noir or something where you're you're lighting down but you're also below eye line meanwhile you start flipping this light up and drop it down even more and we're gonna start to get horror movie lighting um so now we're getting that that underglow that sort of sinister look and it ah you know you can already you can already tell from the video here that it, it just gives it a much more uh horror movie type vibe and you'll notice uh sometimes when you watch horror movies that they'll they'll change lighting or they'll set up lighting in a room so that it's like there's a lamp on a table but then the person walks over to the lamp so that's just this lamp like like shining right up and then they're looking at the character saying something you know it gives a very specific sinister vibe so if you're looking for that kind of emotion definitely definitely underlight your subjects it's like you know when we were all kids we're uh with halloween or 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 any holidays like that uh you know someone's telling a scary story or a campfire story and you shine a light right under their face that's classic that's um that's something that we as humans have sort of ingrained into us so the emotion of lighting i think is something that's intrinsically human it's something that we all understand and yet we've never really talked about it as a as a collective um all right, so let's uh, let's look at the opposite now. Ooh, kick! There we go. So we're gonna bring this way, way up. This, I think this light is gonna be able to reach this far. You know what? I'm gonna switch this real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna light myself from this side because otherwise I'm gonna go completely dark. But I'm gonna switch this guy to battery power real quick. That cable is just a little too much. There we go. All right, drop that off. Get that thing out of the way. All right, and so on the light behind me, we've been using, uh, oh geez, this is real dark. Okay, on the light behind me, we've been using the little NPF batteries. That's the NPF, I wanna say 550. Um, these are much bigger. These ones can power a lot more. They're, uh, I think around, yeah, 7,900 milliamps. So these are, these have a lot of power in them. Uh, you can run one of these lights for about 10 hours on a pair of these. There we go. There we go. Uh, here we go. Boom. All right. There's our light. Beautiful. All right. So let's kill this fill light. Keep our, keep our drama going. All right. High drama. Okay. Now lighting from above. So here it's, it's much more pleasant on the face. You're still going to get your catch lights, which I think is very important. Um, having those, those lights in your eyes, uh, seeing some comments here. Actually, I'm going to grab my water and then we're going to answer some comments. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley, for this is saving my life with a giant bucket of water. Appreciate it. A good external flash. Okay, so I had a question on YouTube from James Bass. Um, can you recommend a good external flash that is not too expensive for the Canon Rebel T4i? My favorite flashes, and they work for any camera. Um, they have a little radio uh radio transmitter and it allows you to just connect with any camera um through i think hot shoe and then there's another there's another one that has like some different connections but they have tons of different versions godox that's exactly what i'm going to suggest daryl daryl got the uh got to the answer before i did so godox has some really really good flashes that are universal um i've heard photographers that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year recommend these. I've heard people who are just getting started recommend these. So they're not overly complicated, but they have all the features that you're gonna need as you go into your career. Um, honestly, check out Godox for flashes. I, I really have been liking them. James, anytime, I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, chatting in with the questions. I always love answering your questions and chatting about media stuff. So we're back to our two point lighting setup here. And you can see now bringing that light up 
gives us a different effect. We can even continue that and sort of talk as we go. But at a certain point, we start to lose those catch lights. So now all of a sudden, I don't, I don't have that light in my eyes anymore. Now, type in the chat, do you, do you notice that difference? Do you notice the difference when, when those catch lights are gone from the eyes? Because personally, I think it's a night and day comparison. Let's, uh, let's pop down here and we'll, we'll slide down just a little bit and you'll see as those lights, there we go, there it is. The lights pop back into my eyes and all of a sudden it's much more pleasant. Um, here we go. I actually kind of like this, this lighting setup right here. Very nice. Um, it's right in my face, but it's uh, it's pretty. It's looking pretty good. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so we got some more questions here. Uh, one more thing. If I purchase the Godox, it only works for Canon, right? I have an old Nikon DSLR as well. So actually, let's uh, let's pop into a screen right here. I'm gonna pull open a new tab. You're gonna see you're gonna see me for a second, but we're gonna go into uh, our in-game here. Well, I, in game. All right. Let's look these up. So Godox has Godox Flash. Uh, we'll go on to do, 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 do. V1 Flash for Canon TTL. So this would work with Canon. Um, I think that there are ones, if I'm not mistaken, TTL Pocket Flash Kit, uh, Flashpoint Evolve, that's 250. Studio Strobe Heads, these are some really good ones. I have the um, basically the constant light versions of these. They're around the same price and um, I, I love them. The Godox 60S's. Um, I, you know, strobes are much more powerful you can get a lot of lighting out of them and they're uh they're pretty compact they they don't take a ton of power like you can power a flash for a good amount of time with just a couple like double a batteries but um i do love constant light like there's something about it you, you get a lot of power for a little bit of a little price and then something like this like the uh, the yangnuo 216 which has been behind me on that little tiny battery it's maybe ten dollar battery um it's gonna last for hours uh let's see here so godox wireless they have um they have these systems which are a little bit more expensive this is like a, a battery powered strobe um and a remote system so you you can take a wireless battery powered strobe out anywhere with you and get strobe lighting which is is great quality lighting. Like you really, really get some powerful stuff. But then you have uh, things like this. So there's the the smaller one. I think these are the ones that I'm thinking of. A little bit less expensive, about 180 bucks. You can set it up for Canon. But then you can also get these other flash triggers with them. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, some of these are going to be uh, built in 2.4 gigahertz, compatible Canon. Hmm, I thought that some of these would have been cross compatible because they're radio systems, but I don't think all of them use the same hot shoe mount. Uh, like I know that Sony has a has a very different system. It's um uh it's not even called a hot shoe. I, I forget what they call it actually. But um we might have it in here. Nope. Okay. Um so yeah. This uh this Canon or Canon version of the Godox got great reviews. Uh, a lot of people really like it. Uh, as you can see, they've only had three one star reviews. Let's take a look at those. I like to look at um, look at reviews and see if I trust the 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 highest rated and the lowest rated ones. Uh, isn't even six months. Most of the flash is not working properly at all. All the settings are tr try it but won't work. Um. I have another Godox Speedlight, AA batteries. This light has been really great. When it was time to add another, I didn't hes hesitate to purchase one. The rechargeable battery is an absolute rock star, and the flash was an absolute pressure. Why, what is this? Only one star. Wow. I received a response. Okay. All right. This is uh, customer service. Reach out to the manufacturer for warranty info. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Why that fails in October under extremely light usage is a real bummer. 
I can understand that. That's um that could be something where the item itself, like it's just you get a bad unit, things like that. Well, I said after six months, a little use. Okay, so they're they're all kind of even six months, most of the flashes. So I, I get the impression that some of the units are gonna be not that great. Um well, let's take a look at the five stars. All right, excelente. This flash is great. Rechargeable battery is a plus. No more spare AA batteries for my previews flash. I can shoot an entire wedding with only one battery. Wow, that's that's huge. Okay, so the battery, um, you know, the rechargeable battery has some serious power to it, it seems. Yeah, um, I've, had, uh, I've had good experiences with these flashes. I've known people who have owned these and swear by them. They used to get the, like I remember getting the original, um, like the Nikon SB7 something speed light. And um, it was like $400. And I think I used it maybe 10 times because I, I realized later on that I could, uh, I could actually just like, you know, clip batteries into these constant lights and bring these around with me. So what's, what's my real need for a, a flash when it's just gonna be stuck to my camera? Like I'm not really gonna be able to use it in the ways that I wanna use it. So instead I started grabbing these little tiny NPF battery powered lights, like these two light bars behind me. These are the YN360s or the YN216, which is my hair light right up here, this little guy. Um, teeny tiny little lights, they're plastic a lot of the time. So yeah, if you drop it down a staircase, it's gonna shatter into a million pieces. But at the same time, you're gonna get good quality light. That's good CRI rating. You can see the, the rendering. And like this one, if you can see, is a little bit, colored differently from this one. Their color balance is the same. They're both at 5600K. They're not exactly perfect. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it definitely does make a big difference. Having the ability to just bring like constant lighting with you, model it exactly how you want, and then take your shots. Um, I always found it really frustrating to like take photos with a flash and then have to move around and figure it out by like looking at the image and being like, oh, that's not at all what I wanted. Um, a lot of that also comes with the ability to know what your flash is gonna be like. There was a photographer that I worked with before. Uh, he was up in Ontario, his name was Alan Dean. Alan Dean Photography, he's probably still there. He does portraits and headshots and he had this ability to like set up his camera, do all this stuff without taking a single shot. Set his camera up, blah, 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 set his light, move it around a little bit, sort of model it a little bit, and then take like three or four shots and be like, all right, I got it. He would like be able to nail that photo so quickly and that's because he knew his settings. He knew how to simply just set his lights and, and really, really get it going. Uh, let's see here. We got a bunch more comments. It's, uh, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, okay. M Misha and Daryl both say, what a, what a difference. This is when we were doing uh, the raising the light so you can actually see catch lights in the eyes. These, these boys. Um, Daryl Henry said, Godfather effect. Yeah, it's definitely like, a, you know, as soon as you lose that lighting, it's, it's very like the person like loses their soul. Um, let's drop this down a little bit more so I can keep those catch lights going. Okay. Um, we have, X1 compatible with MS300s. Is that the flash units? I think so. And what was here? I'm just I'm just doing a little research on your question there. Uh Daryl, that was your question. MS300. MS300. Ah, okay, Godox MS300 Monolite. Okay, that's cool. Non-TTL radio receiver. So, wow, 300 watts, 5600K color temperature. This thing is super powerful. This is only 100 bucks? Wow. Okay, here, I'll show you what I'm looking at here. Um, I realize I've got, um, here we go. I'll make this full screen. Okay, so we're looking at the this Godox Flash, the MS300 that um, I think it was Daryl that mentioned. Yeah, yeah Daryl Henry mentioned X1 compatible with MS300S. Um, the X1, separate purchase of the XT16, X2, or X1 Pro Transmitter. 
Okay, so yeah, you can get these lights. These lights are radio reception, so you uh, basically would just find the compatible radio transmitter for your type of camera. Those transmitters are gonna be much less expensive than buying an entire flash unit uh, for that price, but this seems like a very good deal. $100 here, uh, all great reviews, and yeah, wow. 0.1 to 1.8 second recycling time with flash durations as short as one two thousandth of a second, which is just about as fast as a lot of lenses can actually take a photo. Um, wow, that's really cool. So this seems like a really good option. Uh, you could get a radio transmitter that would uh, work for your camera system and go from there, really. All right, let's go back to our single shot here. I uh, I typically have a, a little remote that I can do that with, but I, again, don't have my stuff all set up here. Uh, so let's let's keep going with our chat. We've got some more comments here. Godfather effect. What is TTL mode versus manual? So manual mode is gonna be setting your your flash manually. You'll set all the, um, the settings in the back. You can adjust it to your camera or you can actually use a light meter, uh, which is a, a tool that one of our friends mentioned um he was on facebook watching the the other time um he uh he this was oh uh matt griller that's right matt griller mentioned this having a light meter which is um for typically more for um film photography because you have to get your light settings and really uh figure out your settings manually before you take that photo because you're not going to be able to look in the back of the camera and go yeah that looks pretty good um so getting a light meter and using it that way is a great way to be able to set your flash manually. Um, depending on the distance that you're at, you can set the distance to your subject and then you can also set the, the power in relation to that. Um, TTL mode is, I wanna see what that actually stands for. TTL definition camera. Photography, ah, okay. TTL stands for through the lens. Ashley, great, great catch. You already got that. Um, through the lens metering refers to a feature of cameras where, whereby the intensity of light reflected from the scene is measured through the lens. So basically your camera is going to send the flash unit um, settings based on like, it's, sort of, it's almost like an auto mode when it comes to your flash. Some cameras, some older cameras don't have that TTL setting. You can't do that with them. A lot of modern ones can. Um, just about any digital camera, I would say, has TTL options. Maybe some older ones don't, but uh, like I, I think the, oh yeah, that's right. The, uh, the Nikon D300, if I'm not mistaken, that didn't have the option for TTL. So you, you actually had to set your flash manually, um, but that, that camera had some other cool stuff about it. It had an internal focus motor, so you could put a manual lens on it and all of a sudden it would go automatic for you um uh okay i was curious on websites it means time to live yeah okay <laughs> on the domains dns ashley's a web designer she does uh web design uh for a bunch of different companies and uh so she's talking in terms of web design there that's funny that's cool yeah, there's a lot of uh there's a lot of crossover uh terms in different creative fields like this so it's it's good to chat and figure out our definitions here I'm definitely going to keep that uh, that monolight up, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I think it was James that's... No, it was Daryl. Daryl that mentioned it to us. Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate that. Um, all right, let's keep going through here. Let's see. You in the U.S. now? Yeah, I actually got that one. We are streaming from the U.S. Uh, I lived in Canada for about 10 years and then came back down after starting my, own, my business, uh, Full Coverage Media Group. And uh, let's see here do we're now in the valley in pennsylvania james bass says i wanted to make videos but the subject is a bit is, is a bit of a distance from me do you know how i can set up a good microphone on the subject and record from a distance uh really good microphone that i like to use it's way less expensive than a lot of your options for something that's hyper directional is going to be a um audio technica at897 if you look in that gear list, you'll be able to find it in there. It's a shotgun microphone, so it's a long, thin thing. Uh, basically, it gives you really, really good directional um, audio, so you can point it at the chest of your subject. You wanna point it like right here. Um, if you point that microphone right at the chest, you're gonna get more of the, the bassier, 
tones of, of human voice and it sounds really rich and warm and nice. But if you, uh, if you point that at someone, you can hit them from about 15 feet away if you really need to. You'll still get some like background noise in the, in, from whatever's behind the person. But if you kind of angle it so you're either you know shooting up if there's no one above or there aren't planes going overhead or shoot it down, then you'll be able to get um, you'll be able to get more of just them. You get that off-axis rejection. It's an AT897. So I'm going to actually uh, reply on here. Um, that would, would oh oh wait no I can reply directly. Oh I, I'm learning how to use things here. James Bass, uh, AT897 Audio Technica. There we go. Okay, wireless mic. How do they how do they do the YouTube prank videos? Wireless mics are another thing. These are gonna, gonna be called wireless lavalier microphones. Um, those can come in many forms. There are some that are some that are just 3.5 millimeter, so they would work with like a like a cell phone or or something like that. Uh, they can also go into the 3.5 millimeter jack in your camera. Others are going to be XLR, so you have to be careful that you have an XLR input if you get one of those. And then still others are going to be just recorders that you can do. So some people might use like the, um, what is the name of that thing? Uh, is the Zoom F1, which is a little tiny module. It's, it's basically, it looks like the transmitter for a, like a wireless mic pack, but it's just a recorder that actually attaches to someone's belt and then has a little lavalier microphone that comes up underneath. Um, so those could be pre-recorded, but in live situations, you would need something that just has a wireless signal. And then, then people can, um, you know, you can go off and uh, do, uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, you can shoot with a really long telephoto lens, someone going up and doing a prank or something on the street. Um, one of my, one of the ones that I've really been liking lately is the Rode the what is that thing it's the road video lavalier thing road lavalier wireless Let's see if i can find it boom road wireless go it's about two hundred dollars you get a receiver and a transmitter it's just a little box that attaches right on there and the microphone that's built in is actually pretty good you can get um additional microphones for pretty inexpensive and those will uh, attach right in there, and you'll be able to um, to get audio wirelessly. That can be really good if you're if you're live streaming from a camera. You plug that into your camera, and then they'll both be synced up. Um, let's see here. We're gonna get back into the chats. Okay. Do 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 do. do. So there's a bit of a distance for me. Yeah. So the AT897 is a really good option. Uh, James, another option actually is the. The, I think it's Lyx Pro, L-Y-X Pro set of matched condenser microphones. It's about $100 for the total set. Um, you can find those on the gear list once again. Um, it's a matched set of condensers and they come with omnidirectional, which is just catches everything. Um, cardioid, which is more focused. That's like this microphone. It's sort of picking up like this. And then hypercardioid, which is going to be more like a shotgun microphone. You're going to get that sort of direction with your mic. Those are very, very directional where like if you, if you go like an inch or two past where, you know, say it's, it's looking directly down the barrel. If you go like that, it's not going to hear me. Um, it's really, really cool. I love those little microphones a whole lot, but you have to have phantom power for those. So you have to be able to power, power those. That AT897 that I mentioned, you can put a little battery directly in it so you don't actually need to have it powered, which is awesome. Very, very nice. Okay, I'm going to read through some more comments. Wireless Go is exactly what I wanted. Awesome. James, Daryl, I'm glad I can answer some questions for you today. Again, if there was anyone from UXL who um, asked some, uh, some pre-register questions, um, there was a little bit of, uh, of a glitch with that today. So ask your questions in the chat here, and I'll be able to, uh, to answer those for you. Uh, they didn't go through. Something was kind of going up, but uh, UXL's got that figured out. So next time you'll be able to pre-register, answer or ask some questions in there, and uh, and be able to uh, you know chat about what you're looking for here. Okay, so we're we're back on the. Let's get back to our list here. So we were talking about the basics of of um, got a little, a little water in my, in my mustache. Uh, we're talking about the basics of photography here. Lighting was our first thing. Obviously, we got this nice little lighting setup. 
This is a two point lighting setup. We have one key right here. It's about a three quarter off of me. Um, it's very, very close to me. So it's, it's having a little bit more extreme of an effect than I would really like. But um, yeah, we have another hair light back here. This is the YN216. So we get, uh, we get a bunch of options when it comes to our, our lights and how to use them. Both of these are currently running off of battery, so you can use these in a mobile setting. Makes it really easy to bring out into locations and use in different situations. So that was lighting. We did a three-point setup, two-point setup. Now let's talk about framing. So framing is going to uh, determine your subject a little bit too. So here, you know, I'm, I'm getting that nice, uh, that nice lighting. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop my, my lighting back on. Eh. Eh. No, I can't quite reach it. I gotta stand up for this. Okay. Oh, look. Oh. Where is it? I don't know where the switch is. There it is. Okay, we're back. I can turn these off. And... E. Nope. There we go. Hmm. Maybe I will keep this one on. It's still a little dark. So I'm gonna I'm gonna you know come up with a better lighting setup there. So we have uh, we have a little bit more more pleasant lighting to work with. Yeah, I am gonna I'm gonna use the, the lights that we had. I just like them so much more. Beautiful. All right. Hopefully my batteries don't die while we're midstream. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about framing. And framing is literally where you put your subject in the image. So a lot of people go by something called the rule of thirds, which is your, sorry, excuse me, um, your, your camera is gonna have, um, you can, well, I mean your camera, your frame is gonna be able to be broken up into sections of three, both vertically, so if you put you know, lines right about here, you would have one section, two sections, three sections. Um, and you put up your lines like that. And then if you break it up into thirds horizontally as well, uh, you would have lines across here and across here. So you'd have section one, section two, section three. And you can organize your frame really easily there. So here's your like center section. Uh, you can also, as we break stuff, you can also line stuff up against um, up against one of the three quarter lines um, or one of the third lines. Uh, so you can have them kind of over in a corner and that's that's really good for like if someone's talking off camera. Great way to light your subject. Uh, you can also flip it over to the other side. As you can see here, my lighting's a little bit more dramatic here. So here I can talk in this direction and it's it's a little bit, you know, it's uh, that three quarter view on your subject you get a little bit more, um, you can organize them just a little bit differently. But there's also things that you can do to really adjust the emotion of your shots in that same sort of way. Let me make sure my, uh, my focus is on here. Okay, so there's a couple things that you can do. Like, uh, I'm not sure if uh, how many of you are really into like, like film, TV, all this stuff, but I've been watching a show called uh, um, Mr. Robot in the past couple of years. It was, it was pretty popular there for a while. Um, that show does a great job of putting people into the bottom third of a frame. So you would have someone talking and they would be like, like down here talking off camera this direction. So they would be, you know, they'd be talking to someone like this. They'd be like, listen, I really don't know what, uh, you know, what happened the other day. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't their fault. I'll try and do my best. And it gives you this big, big area of headspace where you can almost tell that the people who are talking at that moment are currently like overthinking the situation. Like they're really in their heads and they're, they're trying to figure out what's the right thing to do, all this stuff. Um, so it, it, it shows a lot of drama. There we go. Uh, it shows a lot of drama um, and it, it shows a lot of internal conflict. So you can, depending on how you organize your frame like that, you're going to be able to imbue it with a different type of emotion. Um, there's some other ways that people organize their frames too. There's also something called the golden spiral, which is a 
spiral that would cross the frame sort of like this and it follows the Fibonacci sequence. Um, so it's these these ratios and numbers and all this stuff, but you can you can find these overlays and basically use that as like a guide to photography. If you organize things along those lines, you can find some interesting ways to do things. You can also like use that with architectural photography. So um, like one way that I really like to use that is organizing like architectural subjects along those lines. It gives great organization or, um, or having, you know, say this, this bottom three quarter point is your vanishing point, uh, which means that everything sort of leads, all your lines are sort of pointing in that one direction towards this one focal point. Um, and, and using, using your, your focal point and, uh, you know, where, where your distance, what was that called? The, um, uh, the vanishing point, where your vanishing point is, if you, if you organize all those things onto one of those points, you can find some really, really cool ways to organize your shots. Just, it gives, um, it gives people like a, an organized spot to look at. Uh, you can really focus your viewer's attention and you can get some just cool effects like that. Uh, what are some ways that you've used to organize stuff like that? Um, any cool types of framing or or angles that you've had for photography that you've really liked. I have one while I'm waiting for uh, for any comments to come in. Um, there was a photo shoot that I did once and it was uh, in a stairwell. It was the only place that I could get some some really nice, uh, yeah, I can totally, Liz, I can totally show you some examples of the overlays. Um, so there's, there was a photo shoot that I did one time in a stairwell. It was the only place that had a light that we could get close to, like, um, uh, or sorry, a window that we could get close to in the house. It was, I didn't have any lights that I could really use. So we got them up close to this window and you had this sort of light, but then you had them at this sort of like downward angle. So you had, you know, nice catch lights in the person's face, but they were also looking up into the camera and just something about that different angle and the different framing really made those images stand out for me. Uh, let's see, Wanderer Fakir. There's a website in YouTube called Carmilla, which was shot with just a single camera. I wonder how did they shoot a whole series with a bunch of characters with just one camera in one room? Um, well, I mean, they could have done that in takes too. Like they, they could have also done it that way, but there's, there is, um, like there's getting to be weird ways that you can do single camera stuff. Um, I mean, you could obviously do a 360 camera and then frame up afterwards and just present that frame. Um, there's, uh, there's cameras where you just have one camera on a tripod and you're switching back and forth between people really fast. Um, there's, there's a couple, there's a couple ways that you can do a single cam, single camera television show, um, and, and sort of make it look seamless like that. So I would, I would think that they did that through editing, but we'll, uh, we'll maybe look into that in a little bit. Let's see here. We got, uh, show us some examples of the three frames. Here we go. I'm gonna find, uh, let's see. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm gonna pop into our, uh, our, our view here. We'll pull this up so you don't have to look at that weird um, universe that opens up when I, I show Streamlabs on the stream. So these are the these are the frame lines that I'm talking about. This is the rule of thirds in uh, in a nutshell. Uh, so you you cut your frame horizontally into third sections. So it's one, two, three across, and then vertically one, two, three up and down. Um, when you organize something right on these these focal points. You can really get some interesting uh, results. Like I, I like putting people like their eyes right about here. Uh, if their head is filling the frame, like say they're they're up like this, um, or doing some other things where like if I'm trying to show claustrophobia, you know maybe I would have the person a little bit higher in the frame so they feel more of it and they feel like they're they're sort of compressed into that that small frame uh, and like trying to fit into the shot. Or if I'm trying to show, like we, we discussed, you know, internal struggle and a lot of headroom and all this stuff, someone being in their head about something, I'd put them down in this this frame and they'd look off this direction. So there's there's really interesting things that you can do with a very simple 
uh, outline like this. And it's always worth experimenting with it. Um, you know, there's there's no really set way of using this and and saying like, okay, you have to do it this way every time. That's not ever the case in photography. And oftentimes, we as photographers are trying to stand out. So if we can do something like this, use a template that a lot of other people are using and switch it around to our standards, that's great, that's perfect. Let's see if we can see find the um, photography, uh, what is the golden ratio? Okay, so here's what I'm talking about in the golden ratio. We'll pull up some of these images here. Uh, here we go. This one's this one's a little busy, but I think it's going to be a good a good example. Okay, so in this image, let's see if I can just just pull up the image itself. Nope, that's link. Open image in new tab. There we go. Okay, so this here we go. You can see uh, there's a line that goes through. We have our rule of thirds in red, uh, but then there's a line that carries through this blue line. Um, I'm honestly not sure how it works, but it follows the Fibonacci sequence and that golden ratio to spiral endlessly inwards. Uh, it always gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and it never really comes to a final point. But you can organize subjects along these lines and and like I mentioned before, find some really interesting results. So you can see the top of the tripod head is contained in within this. Uh, the the most lit section of the chair is contained in there. Uh, this bottom line of the of the of the chair also kind of leads to that line. And then you carry up over the umbrella, sort of follows that shape. His elbow pressed out, the edge of the bed, and then coming around the action down here and the way that his arms and legs are all sort of um, organized in that way. So it doesn't have to be anything that's like exact or you know you have to put something here, you have to put something there. Um, it just sort of becomes a template that you can work with him. <coughs> wow, that's cold water, woo! Okay, yeah, so that's that's what I was talking about, this blue line, when it comes to the golden ratio. Uh, let's go back here, let's go back to our single shot. Cool, cool, let's pull up Restream, let's chat with people, okay. Uh, must get pretty hot in there with all the lights, it is the coldest room in the house, it's very nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, LEDs are very, very cool lights. You can like see these, this has been running for a while. I can literally take the, like I'll even take the plastic screen off and I'll show you, you can put your hands directly on these lights and they're, they're not hot at all, at all. There we go. Oh, Ashley has a good description of the, uh, the golden ratio here. It constantly cuts your image into a perfect square and the remaining rectangle. That is segmented then into a square and a remaining rectangle. It spirals inward. That's really cool. Um, okay, brief summary of what happened so far. Rohan, we've been talking about the basics of lighting. Uh, we talked about, or basics of photography, sorry. We've been talking about lighting. Uh, we're going into framing right now. We've been talking about that for a little bit. We just talked about the rule of thirds and the golden ratio. Uh, a couple different ways to organize subjects and items in your image. And now we're going to be talking about um, settings on your camera. And then finally, we're going to be talking about editing a little bit. And that'll be it for today. We've already had about, uh, how, how, how far are we into the stream? I gotta, I gotta check in here. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. So we've been live for about an hour and 44 minutes. It's pretty good, but uh, we'll probably, probably end up around the three hour mark. Um, Okay, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Wonder if I here. I asked a question about high surface looking like flat one in photos. Even if I set my my frames high above, I still get the flat surfaces through the phone. Is it fault of my technique? Um, yeah, I remember that question. I remember that question, and I'm still not quite sure what you mean about the the high surfaces looking like flat on the photos. I would love it if you could send me an example. Uh, find me on Instagram. Um, it's fcmg underscore stay. 
you can find me there. You can send me a direct message and you can even send me the images that you're talking about. And then we can, we can kind of discuss in person. I would love to, um, I would love to talk about this on the next stream. Um, we're going to be doing some more stuff like this. So Wanderer, I would, I would love to hear that question in, in Instagram. Again, that's at FCMG underscore stay. Uh, do, 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 do. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's go back. I'm going to make sure that I'm hitting all these questions here. I just want to prank videos. Do the wireless go. Bella has the coldest room in the house. Okay. Can you show us some examples of three, three frames? Did that. Uh, da, 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 do. Are these grid patterned? Um, these, uh, these grids are the, uh, like the rule of thirds and the golden ratio. As Ashley mentioned, golden ratio is apparently when you have your 16 by nine frame, you cut a perfect square out of one and then that rectangle that's gonna be left over, you cut another perfect square out of that, another rectangle's left over and you keep going and it spirals inward and inward into infinity. Um, it's a, uh, it's something, apparently the golden ratio is found everywhere in nature. It's a very natural looking um, way to organize things, so. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see what else. There's a website. Are these grid pattern? Constantly cuts your image in perfect square. Yes, I just joined now. Okay, so we're caught up again. All right, so we talked about lighting, talked about framing. Let's move on to the next thing, which is uh, settings. And I'm gonna have to get my camera out. So, uh, Everyone who's watching right now, you've been watching through a Sony a6400, which is actually my favorite photo camera because it does uh, eye autofocus. So it'll autofocus on the actual eye of a subject, which is fantastic. Um, personally, that's what I always search for when I'm when I'm trying to focus in uh, in photography. Daryl asked about flash photography. Daryl, where is that? Oh yeah, okay, great job working in the small space. Question for the future going to do a flash photography Q and A and how much advanced notice will we get? Um, with, uh, when it comes to advanced notice, I've been working with UXL to try and um, get the subjects of these uh, figured out in advance. So I, I do have a list of, this is what we're gonna be doing for the next 10 episodes. Um, I'll try and get that subject matter to UXL, UXL a little bit faster this week. Hopefully it'll be a couple days early, but they've been doing an email blast on the morning of, and then also uh, right as it goes live. So uh, we're working on getting some some more uh, advanced notice out there, but we will be going into flash photography Q and A. I haven't done a ton with flash photography, so I would love to explore that with people. Um, I might even pick up that uh, that Godox. What was it? The M three or something like that. It was the the light that that. I think, uh, was it Daryl mentioned? Yeah, okay, so um, we're gonna do some more more of that so you can, you can work with your flashes for photography, but the concept and the placement of lighting is gonna be the same. Um, MS300, thank you. Uh, the concept and the placement of your lighting is gonna be just about the same, where if you have your lighting set up like this, you have your slightly less powered light behind, you have your more powered light in front, uh, they're a little bit, little bit like 45 degrees off axis, things like that. Those principles remain the same no matter what light you're using. Um, so placement like that, it will work for flash photography even if we're not necessarily using flashes to get there. Um, the only real difference there is gonna be modeling your lights is gonna be a little bit harder when it comes to flash because you can, like some flashes have like a modeling bulb, which is a little light bulb that is constant. You can use that to sort of shape your light and figure out what it's gonna look like. But when it comes to the power of those lights, it's gonna be hard to judge unless you know your settings or if you have a light meter. So spend as much time as you can familiarizing yourself with your flashes. Uh, get some friends in the studio, tell them you'll give them free headshots if they come in and, and let you take some photos of them. So experimenting is key in that case. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get this camera put together. I gotta put a battery in here and then we'll talk, we'll talk settings here. Um, camera settings are important because 
I, I think one of the most important things that I did with a digital camera was just start walking around doing photo walks, I would call them, which is when, uh, when I lived in Ottawa, Ontario, um, Canada is a, a very, very safe, very friendly country. Um, it does have its, you know, you, there are some places where you want to be careful and all that, but, um, mostly it's, it's just a very, very safe place to be. So I always felt comfortable walking around with a little digital camera. I would just sort of palm it in my hand, walk around and, and take shots of sometimes people, I would try not to get like photos of their faces and post it anywhere online. But, um, I would mostly take photos of like little, little scenes that I would find. Like there was, there were these great bell telephone booths along Wellington street in Ottawa. And, uh, sometimes you get these, these nice little scenes where it's like, IV is overtaking the, uh, you know, the, the photo booth and you get these, these nice little shots. So, um, if you find me on Facebook, actually, you'd be able to find a lot of those, uh, a lot of those albums. Or if you look up my old company, uh, stay heavy studios, it was made for more, uh, sort of counterculture type stuff. Um, it's doing a lot of photos of live musicians and metal bands and things like that. So you can find those photos on there. Um, but we're going to talk, we're going to talk settings now. So, these cameras are great. They have all kinds of ways that you can check your images beforehand. Uh, like this one literally has a live view screen. I even keep that screen on all the time, but you can switch between the screen and this little viewfinder. As soon as you press your eye up to it, that screen goes dark and you see what's going on in there. Um, when it comes to manual settings on a camera, if you're taking photos, there's three settings that you really, really need to pay attention to. Uh, that would be your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture. Uh, each of those are a little bit different. So the, the aperture is going to be how wide open the element inside of the lens is. Uh, I could, ooh, I could grab some manual lenses up there really quick. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to be back in two seconds. I'm just going to run and grab some manual lessons of lenses so I can show you this like firsthand opening and closing an aperture, all that stuff. Be right back. I'm probably going to knock over some lights trying to do this. Okay, here we go. We're back. Okay, cool. <laughs> Alrighty. So these are, uh, I have a, a kit that's all manual lenses. And these are great for uh, for showing examples like this. Let's see. Here's, here's a nice lens. I believe that's a Mir 1B. Let's take a look at it. <sighs> okay. So, lenses is in fact a mirror one B cool. So this is a little Russian lens that I got from the Ukraine. Uh, and you can see inside of it. I think I can adjust my aperture. Oh, no. Okay. This one doesn't have the manual manual control unless, ah, yes, there we go. Okay. So here you can see that internal, diaphragm opening and closing, right? So this is as wide as it will go, which is 28, F28. Uh, on this lens, that's whatever that size is. Um, but that controls not only the amount of light that's coming into your camera, but also how deep the focus is on your camera. So um, the camera that I'm using right now, right here, has a very shallow depth of field. It's f 1.8. That means it's in your camera. So for me, it's right about here to right about there. So there's about eight inches of, uh, of real focus there. And I do that because I, I want to blur out my background a little bit more. I want to kind of, you know, not show you all the details that are back there. And I want you to focus on what we're talking about. Meanwhile, you might want to get everything in focus in your shot. So if you were to adjust your aperture to F8 or something higher in number like that, you're gonna get more in focus in your shot 
but it's going to let in relatively less light because you're taking that that little internal diaphragm and you're going like this you're closing it down but you can also get sharper images that way um like some lenses they are really not sharp until you get to like f 3.5 or even 5.6 some lenses also have their their highest point of clarity so like their sharpest point is going to be if you open it up all the way wide and then stop down a little bit so for this one it's probably at f4 so here i'll set um set this here so wide open like this there's going to be some or here we go wide open like this there's going to be weird things like maybe chromatic aberration you'll see some colors fringing and, and whatnot um or some things just won't be completely in focus not even like the things that are in the focal plane like that that strip of physical space that's supposed to be in um in focus uh meanwhile if you stop that down a little bit it can remove some of those effects uh, especially on zoom lenses which have more elements inside of them that can that can make a huge effect uh wonder if Akir actually asked a really good question here i like this a lot what is the meaning of 18 to 20 millimeter lens and 70 to 300 millimeter lens what's the difference between them okay so the that uh millimeter range is uh it it has to do with the length of the diaphragm from the sensor all this stuff basically um the lower the number the wider the image that you're going to get so i have a lens for example that's like a nine millimeter lens and that thing gets like crazy wide view it's super super wide angle meanwhile if i put on something that's 200 even 100 millimeters it's going to be very very focused in so this camera currently has a 30 millimeter lens on it which is pretty normal looking view like that's about what the human eye can see um the the sort of angle that we can see at see like i lose clarity or like i stop being able to see around here so it's about 180 degree field of view so you can you can get um like a normal field of view from that but as you go up get into like 50 millimeter that's going to be a little bit tighter uh, 100 millimeter is going to be a little bit tighter as well but there's other things that go along with that such as image compression so i'm going to look more distorted on a wide angle lens i'm going to look more uh like here i'll give you an example if i lean in my head gets big and my body gets small meanwhile if you're taking someone's photo with a telephoto lens it will make them look very flat so it can be more pleasing to the eye if you take photos like portraits with a telephoto lens people's faces will look more flat more uh more slim and whatnot meanwhile with this if i get up close you know things get a little distorted and sort of bubbly looking so typically the longer the lens the uh the tighter the shot the more zoomed it will be so like um with a 300 millimeter lens you're gonna have to be like 15 20 feet away from your subject at least because it's gonna be a really really zoomed in lens whereas 18 millimeters you know you might have to be within 5 to 10 feet to really get like a, a good shot and even then you still might have you know half or their entire body in the photo so the first uh, of the three things that we we're talking about was aperture that's obviously this little guy in here that's how wide the internal diaphragm of your lens is. Meanwhile, there's also shutter speed. Shutter speed, uh, it determines two things as well. It determines the amount of light that comes into your camera. The longer the shutter speed, the more light is gonna get into your image. Shorter your shutter speed, the less amount of light. But that means that it also affects how, how much motion blur you get in your image. So with this this image you're seeing a little bit of motion blur i have this currently set to 1 60th of a second because i'm shooting at 30 frames a second this whole film thing we'll get into that at another time but um you get a normal amount of blur so if you were to freeze frame one of these images you could probably see my fingers are, are a little bit blurry and they move like a little bit of a distance 
that shows that there's movement in your image. So like if you're trying to get someone swinging a baseball bat and you see you see the bat from here all the way through to here and there's just a big blur all between them, you would need a slower shutter speed in order to catch that. So something like 1 40th of a second or 1 50th of a second. Uh, meanwhile, the higher the number below, the shorter your shutter speed will be. So if you crank up your shutter speed to like 1 200th of a second or 1, you know, 1 2,000th of a second, you're going to get very, very sharp still images. There's not going to be any blur or motion blur or movement that you're going to see. So if you're uh, in a situation where you have a ton of light and you can do that, you can crank your, uh, your shutter speed way up, then you can get things like you know, someone frozen in air and it looks like they're just floating there. Um, you could get, you know, the, uh, the wings of a hummingbird perfectly sharp and in focus. Um, things like that would, would, would allow you to, to get more, more sharp still images, uh, versus shooting at a lower shutter speed. So the other thing, the third part to this puzzle, we talked about shutter speed. We talked about, um, aperture. The third part of the pu puzzle is ISO, which is your internal sensitivity to light. Um, I'm curious what ISO actually stands for. Definition, okay. Okay, digital photography, ISO measures the sensitivity of the image sensor. Uh, it doesn't really say what ISO stands for I just wanted to know what those letters stood for but hey whatever um, <laughs> so your ISO is is your base light sensitivity typically when I take photos I want to keep that as low as possible like right now this camera is the light sensitivity is up a little tiny bit that was to help compensate for that little light that I had up there that wasn't quite um, it's not really an acronym related to photography um, interesting. I, I'm really curious what the acronym means. Um, if you, if you know, I would love to hear it in the chats. It's a generic standard organization. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like, um, standard deviations or something like that. Like it's more of like a statistic number, statistic word versus like a photography word. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's really cool. I would love to hear more of an explanation of that. Thank you. Thank you. Lamus. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm off, but we'll, we'll figure out the definition at some point. If you pop it in the chat, I'll read it through. Uh, okay. So ISO is going to be your, your base, uh, sensitivity to light in your camera. So you'll see in this one, uh, right now I've got it set real low. My ISO is set to 200. I can go down lower down to hundred and it's very, very low. But if we go up, suddenly it gets super, super bright, even to the point where that dark bag in the background gets blown out. These cameras can can go up very, very high, like the uh, the Sony cameras, This the top ISO in photography mode for this one is 51,200. Now, there are problems with ISO. So the higher your ISO, typically, the more noise you'll have in your image. Some cameras are weird. Some film cameras actually have dual native ISO, they call it, where they have like a base ISO where there's no noise. And then you go up and you go up and it gets slightly more noisy. And then you get to another point where there's no noise again. Um, noise is going to be the little grain that you see in your image. Uh, and when you turn it up, when you turn up your ISO really high, um, especially if you're trying to compensate for like, like if I had a... Um, really small aperture setting so like f8 or f10 and then my shutter speed was up to f100 uh, i'll give you an example directly oh that's cool thank you lamus photography security legal so that that applies to different um different realms that's cool so i'm gonna go f4 on this camera obviously it just got way darker and then I'm gonna raise the shutter speed to one, one over 200. And now I'm gonna have to raise my ISO to compensate up to 2000. 
All right, so this gets me a back about where I was before in terms of my exposure. Like this is what it would look like. But you can also see my depth of field, my focus is much deeper. So I can, I can still be in focus like all the way up here. But you'll also see my fingers don't blur at all when I move my hand. So at one two hundredth of a second, you get very, very crisp action and it sort of looks like an action movie, like if someone was, you know, fighting or something like that. Looks great for video. Um, for photos, you would get like frozen motion, so you wouldn't get any motion blur or anything like that, but it looks a little bit weird in video. Um, we'll go over why that is with video in another time. Uh, we've got a lot of video content coming up. Let's set our settings back here. Uh, let's drop this back down. Do, 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 do. Nope, wrong direct. There we go. There we go. Oh, and also you'll see if we go too low with the shutter speed, then all of a sudden your video is looking very washy and very blurry, even though it might work. So if you take a photo, you can get, you know, these long trails of movement, which look really weird. One sixtieth, and just this down to one point eight. Okay, cool. So we're back, back to our original settings. So that's uh that's our settings. When it comes to manual settings, those are sort of the basics. Every camera has some sort of ISO setting. It might be called gain on some cameras. Uh, it also has uh, shutter speed and aperture. Some cameras, like your phone, you might not be able to control all of that stuff or all of that at the same time. Um, your camera also has modes just like that where it gives priority to one setting that you're adjusting manually. Uh, we'll talk about those more, but we're gonna get to some questions and then we're gonna move on to the final, final topic for the day, which is editing. Uh, Wanderer says, uh, is it wise to change ISO during outdoor night shoot or like outdoor shooting before dawn? Are we better choosing changing shutter speed and aperture? Depending on your lighting situations, um, you know, some things can be a little bit more forgiving. So in a situation like that, uh, you might need to bump your ISO a little bit because you don't have a lot of available light. Um, also, if you're, if you're trying to get a whole lot of stuff in focus, like if you're trying to get a large group of people all in one photo together, you're gonna have to have a slightly deeper depth of field, which means a higher aperture, something around f4. Um, so you're not gonna be able to get as much light that way either. Um, you know, when you're shooting landscapes, it might work really well to lower your shutter speed, but then you'd have to have your camera on a tripod or something very, very still. You might even need to get like a remote trigger for it because if you press the camera button, just that, the act of pressing that shutter can be enough to destabilize your camera and get a little camera shake in there. <clears throat> um, Sony cameras have the Play Memories app so you can control your phone, your camera via your cell phone. Uh, a lot of other cameras have that, those same sorts of features um, and sort of options that you can, you can use to do that. I remember back in the day with the D3200, um, this was probably six years ago, at this point or seven years ago, the D3200 had a little dongle that you could add onto it that you could actually uh, control it wirelessly with your cell phone, which was super, super cool. Didn't work anywhere near as, as well as it should have for $200, but um, yeah, it, it did the trick. So um, if you can put your, your camera on a tripod and you're taking landscape photos, something that's not moving, um, I mean, even, even if it's like water, so I guess not necessarily something that's not moving, but like if you're not trying to get someone's face perfect and, and in focus, then lower your shutter speed. Put your camera on a tripod and you'll get these really, really beautiful, like like if you're, if you're taking a photo of a river or a waterfall, it's gonna look very soft and fuzzy. Uh, you're not gonna get like the hard splashes and all that stuff. Um, but it, it can be hard to shoot outdoors, especially in like daytime with a low shutter speed. We'll get onto some techniques about how to do that with ND filters and, and whatnot uh, soon. But uh, in the meantime, we're just gonna talk about these base settings. 
ISO during a night shoot or like outdoor shooting before dawn. ISO could be really helpful there. Uh, if you're trying to keep your subject in focus, um, sharp, and have them be like the only thing, you could lower your aperture as much as possible. Get down to like with these lenses, this is the Sigma DC series. Um, so you're, you're looking at me through a 16 millimeter lens. This is a 30 millimeter lens. It's a little bit tighter, a little bit more zoomed in. A um, little bit more pleasant for photos and for, for people's portraits. You can bring this lens all the way down to f, so right now it's f2.2, which is pretty, pretty fast, wide open. But you can go all the way down to f1.4, which almost, almost brings us into a range where this is like, like properly exposed back here. Uh, if I want it sharp, I would keep it around like 1 100th. One so... Yeah, it looks like I need to adjust my ISO. Let's go up to about 320. That's about where we would want it. When it comes to ISO, I'm sort of stuck in the DSLR world where I never want to get above like 1600 or 3200 ISO. Otherwise, the noise just gets to be too much. But with photography, there's a lot that you can do to edit out um, things like that. Like if you're taking your camera and you're shooting in RAW, uh, you're going to have a little bit more editing ability in when you're when you bring that image into your computer. Um, I like to use the Adobe programs, so I use Adobe Photoshop when it comes to editing images like that. There are, I think, some free trials that you can get to try those programs out, and they're just honestly fantastic. Um, so Adobe has this program called Camera Raw, where if you're shooting in Camera Raw, um, there are some other programs that have the ability to do this as well but it basically lets you take your image and adjust your settings a little bit after the fact. So you can adjust your exposure uh, a little bit. You can adjust your shadows and your highlights, your midtones, and all, all kinds of things like that without actually like editing the photo itself. You're, you have additional information that your camera records. Um, so you can adjust along those lines without really doing a lot of damage and like making that image look all gritty and crispy and gross looking. Um, what, uh, what you can do is you can go into camera raw and you can adjust your white balance. So if your white balance is a little bit off or you're, if you were set to auto white balance, uh, you can adjust that after the fact and it's pretty, pretty forgiving. It's not perfect. Uh, it's not like you're shooting, you're getting an absolute raw image and able to adju adjust after the fact. It's a little bit different from that. But um, Adobe Premiere Elements. Mm. How do I edit in RAW but output to JPEG? Uh, in Adobe Elements, I'm not too familiar with Adobe Elements. I know that in Camera Raw in Bridge, which is um, a, an organizational program that Adobe, ha Adobe has, in Adobe Bridge, uh, in Lightroom, and in Photoshop, it's a dialog box that comes up and it allows you to save in the bottom corner. So you would edit those, those raw images. Uh, what I like to do is I edit in camera raw. So that's a Photoshop and bridge program. Camera raw has this little pop-up. It lets you do all those little settings and whatnot, but the images are all still raw images. Down in the bottom left, there's a little dialog box that says save images. There you can choose, uh, you select all the images first that you want to obviously save. And then you can select that button, choose where on your hard drive that you're gonna save it. I typically go to an external drive. Um, I try and save the two places at once if I have the space for it. Uh, and then, oh cool, Elements is both photo and video. I like that a lot. Photoshop actually does video now too. So they're all kind of video editors. Um, <coughs> let's see, so down at the bottom left of uh, Camera Raw, there's that little save button. You can save that as a JPEG. You can choose your, you know, your formats in there. Um, with Premiere Elements, I would assume. Hmm. I'm not gonna assume. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up really quick. Uh, save JPEG. Elements raw editing. Yeah. Okay. Process camera raw images in Photoshop elements. Okay, so this uh, this little Google result I found 
just because a program can do something doesn't necessarily mean it's the best tool for the job. That's why Adobe has an entire suite of programs. Exactly. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point. Um, so while you can edit video in Photoshop, it's really not the best photo editor uh, or video editor. Um, Photoshop is best for like photo manipulation. You're taking one photo and you're putting like a bunch of different little photos into it and you're making it look realistic or you're doing like digital painting or something like that. That might even be better in Illustrator depending on the style that you're working in. So um, Photoshop is really for like photo manipulation. Lightroom is more for just editing your photos and doing what you would do really in a dark room situation. Um, Adobe Elements, it looks like uh, it combines elements of both photo and video, which is really cool having a s single solution like that. It does say that you can edit camera raw. So, uh, do, 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 do. so saving it, saving changes to your camera raw, raw image. Um, in the camera raw dot, in the camera raw dialog box, apply adjustments to one or more camera raw images. Once you do your adjustments, you can click the save image button down in that bottom left uh, area. I think we're going to be working in basically the same program here. That camera raw is like, it works really well. I love it a lot. Photoshop's video editor has been helpful for creating GIFs in my experience. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Anything beyond that, it slows down your computer a lot. Yeah. To try and do some basic video edits. That's, that's a good point. Um, I actually haven't done GIFs in Premiere Pro at all. I've done them in Photoshop as well. So I, I think that's a, that's a great point. Um, yeah, so Photoshop Elements has the same sort of UI as um, Camera Raw does. So if you go through, you save those images out, they're gonna be saved as a JPEG in the, in the end. Just gotta make sure that all your settings are, are set to that as well. We're gonna go through and do some like editing intensives in the coming weeks. We have a bunch more material coming up. Um, this is episode two out of 10 episodes that are all gonna be about photography. Uh, so expect more material like this. Feel free to ask questions and jump into the chats and uh, you know ask me questions for next time. Find me on Instagram and feel free to send me a DM. FCMG underscore stay on Instagram. I also have a Facebook page where I do gaming and I'm always I'm always down to ask answer your uh, photo, video, and media questions. So even if I'm streaming a video game, feel free to pop on and ask me a question. I'll stop and I'll I'll chat with you for a minute. Um, you can also find me on Twitch. I actually just made affiliate and I wanted to thank everyone who's been watching on Twitch to help me out with that. Uh, twitch.com, no, twitch.tv forward slash FCMG stay. FCMG underscore stay is where you can find me. Got to be able to say these things. Um, and uh, otherwise, these, these episodes stream directly to YouTube and Facebook for UXL. Uh, we do the first hour on Instagram and then we try and get people over to Facebook and all that stuff too. Uh, Six Finger Lou, <laughs> Daryl Henry, uh, I'll, I'll add you on there. Thanks. Send me a message and let's chat. So yeah, FCMG underscore stay on any of those platforms and you'll find me. Uh, we'll be able to have chats about this stuff and we'll get more into about uh, more into the, uh, the nitty gritty about this stuff. Again, I'm not like the expert on this stuff. I have been doing media for a while, for about seven years as my own, as a freelancer. Um, but uh, I like to make discussions happen. So it's always good having people chatting in, answering questions, asking questions, and uh, sharing their experience and expertise. So definitely come chat with us next time. We've got, uh, we've got a lot more to talk about. The last point that I did want to talk about today, sorry for just hitting the microphone there. Uh, the last point that I wanted to talk about was um, breaking the rules. So we just talked about the basics and all these rules for photography. Um, and my, my biggest takeaway that I would like you to have from this episode is to learn these rules, to uh, practice them, to exercise them a little bit, try them out for yourself, see what situations they work, and then learn how you can break those rules. So if you can find a why, you can find a how, you can find a when, make it happen. And I would love to see your examples. Um, send me messages on FCMG underscore stay on uh, Facebook or full coverage media group on Facebook. You can also find me personally on Instagram. Send me messages there with your cool photos and tell me how you broke those rules. I would love to hear about it. We might even discuss them on some further episodes. It'd be really cool to go, go through like 
hey, these are all our submitted images. People were talking about this on the last stream and this is the results that we got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna leave you on that, uh, that end screen again. And uh, I'll probably be on later today on Twitch doing some gaming or something like that. But otherwise, thank you big time to UXL for sharing these streams. It's been great fun chatting with you on every Monday. So come back next week, Monday around noon, uh, Eastern Standard Time. We'll be right back here and we'll be chatting with you again. Thanks for your time. And uh, that's it for me. So have a good one. Peace. Thank you.